Captured by smugglers when he was just a hatchling, a macaw named Blue never learned to fly and lives a happy, domesticated life in Minnesota with his human friend Linda. Blue is thought to be the last of his kind, but when word comes that Jules, a lone female, lives in Rio de Janeiro, Blue and Linda go to meet her. Animal smugglers kidnap Blue and Linda, but the pair soon escape and begin their perilous adventure back to freedom and Linda. Hello everyone, welcome back to Move Mistakes, and today we're going to bring you the 10 mistakes we found in Rio. We gotta give out the usual spoiler alert, and if this is your first time visiting the channel, then welcome. You will see continuation errors, props that move, and things disappear and reappear. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, I had nothing to do with that. But, huh, you have to admit it's actually a pretty good song. Naturally. Yeah, sing it live. In the beginning of the movie, the baby bird named Blue falls out of his nest. He is then captured by smugglers, packed up and shipped off to America. Upon arriving to America, he is placed in the back of a pet truck, whose latch comes unloose and he falls out of the back. Here we get a good look at the red stoplight that is facing away from the truck, just before it makes its abrupt stop. However, as the camera switches angles, you'll notice now that the stoplight is facing near the truck. looking for him. Eager to find Blue, bird enthusiast Tulio finds himself in a bookshop in Minnesota. Once invited into her shop, he explains to her that he has traveled 6,000 miles just to find Blue. Upon giving her his card, he makes an attempt to interact with Blue, but in the background we can notice that there is a computer monitor behind the desk. Linda. But just after he makes some bird calls in an attempt to interact with Blue, the bird calls to Linda for help, but notice in the background that the computer monitor is now missing. But as Tulio continues to squawk and make noise, the camera angle changes back and we can now see the monitor is back in the same place. Wow! You're actually communicating! Yes, yes, I introduced myself and shook my Tulio. You know, your macaw is a very special bird. In fact, yeah, we know, it may appear to be like deja vu, but it is not. We are just keeping in the same scene because we found another mistake. So once again, just as Tulio gives Linda his card, he attempts to communicate with the blue bird. His dancing and squawking frightens the poor bird. But just then, we get a good look at this spot on the desk that has just two pins. Linda is then tricked into thinking that he is communicating with blue. But just as the camera angel switches back, there are now two books in the place where there was none. ...myself and shook my tail feathers counterclockwise, thus deferring to his dominance. Tail flaps, operational, and back. In this scene, Blue isn't happy that he isn't able to fly. So he checks his wings, his landing gear, and his tails to make sure everything is functioning properly. With everything in good working condition, he now checks the runway for one last check. Yet, take notice at the end of the runway when there are no lights at the end of the table. With all systems go, all he needs to do now is talk himself into taking off. Three, two, one, let's go. So as Blue is barreling down the runway, he suddenly changes his mind. And we get a good shot of the Christmas lights at the end of the table that weren't there previously. Security guard work is serious business, and millions of people are hired all over the world to guard other people's valuables. So I'm pretty sure that dancing and stripping on the job is not permitted for obvious reasons. But I believe if you're going to do it, you should at least have matching wristbands to go with those colorful inklets. So I guess it's lucky for this samba dancing security guard that animators felt the same way. So he now has colorful yellow and purple wristbands to go along with those anklets. Lucky for him. He held it to my mouth like, like this. Are you dead? I'm about to have a heart attack. Just do it. Oh, fine. Shh. Play dead. 
In mistake number six, Jewel tells Blue to play dead. This is an obvious trick, so that when the kidnappers open the cage, they can catch him by surprise and hopefully escape. But take note that in this shot, that Blue falls to the left as Jewel lays to his right. Stop twitching. Oh, come on. It's the twitching that sells it. So when the lead kidnapper finally takes the cover off the cage, you'll notice that Blue and Jules have now switched places. Jules is on the left, and now Blue is on the right. I thought I told you I needed these birds alive. In one of the very few action scenes in the movie, Jules and Blue are trying to make their escape. They are trying to outrun the evil bird Nigel on the rooftops of Rio. But just as they make a quick left, Nigel runs headfirst into a power box, shutting off all the power to the city as you can see here. Now from our estimation, it should take hours and hours for the power to get back up to the entire city. But as Nigel regroups himself and flies away with no power, Jules and Blue finally make it to the forest and we can see that the lights from the city are suddenly back on. They're giving me gray feathers! Oh, this papa! In this scene, Raphael, played by George Lopez, saves Blue and Jules from the wrath of his kids. So as they explain to Raphael what their relationship is, one of Raphael's kids sneaks up from behind and pulls some feathers out of Blue's backside, as you can see him fall to the ground here. As the three continue their conversation about the kids, Jules finally asks him if he can help them get the chain off of their foot. Yet, as the camera angle pans down, you can see that the feathers that were pulled off of Blue are no longer there. Lucky for you, you know Raphael. We did it! In the scene where Linda and Tulio are trying to save the birds, she drives a stolen float onto the runway trying to stop the plane from taking off. After one of them remarks how good the plane looks, the leader says, pull up you idiot. But as he pulls back on the stick, the flap on the wing goes down, indicating that the plane should have done a nosedive. What are you doing? I'm not gonna let you go. We're chained to each other. In our tenth and final mistake, Jules is falling out of the plane to her death. And Blue, being the gentleman that he is, jumps out to save her. Jules tells Blue he's crazy, but Blue tells her that they are meant to be together. And as anticipated from the beginning of the movie, they finally share their first kiss. And take note that they are face to face when doing so. In a last ditch effort to save both of their lives, Blue's courage grows, he spreads his wings out and finally flies. But in this shot of the two lovebirds, Jules is suddenly facing away from him. So tell me, were there any mistakes that you found in Rio that we missed? If so, let us know in the comment section below using the hashtag mistakes. Also, don't forget to let us know what you'd like to see next using the hashtag movie. And if you haven't joined our Movie Mistakes family yet, what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button now for more great videos like this one. As always, thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next week.